universe with its natural wonders of bright sunrises, blazing sunsets, twinkling stars, and the silvery, silent moon has always been captivating humans and thus allow us to enjoy these natural wonders. However, the story for eclipses has not always been the same. Instead of enjoying these natural wonders, people have woven numerous scary stories around them and continue to believe them till today. In the wake of a total solar eclipse on August 21st, it becomes even more relevant to understand the history and science of eclipses. Today, we are able to predict eclipses accurately, but have you ever wondered if this was a possibility in the ancient times? If so, who and how were they able to do it? Travel with me through a journey across time to find out more about it. The ever curious minds of ancient civilizations too, with their persistent observations, were able to track and predict eclipses. It was the Babylonians living in what is today's southern Iraq perfected eclipse prediction. The Babylonian clay tablets from 518 and 465 BCE were some of the first recorded ancient eclipses that we know of. The Babylonians came up with the calculation of the sorrow cycle, which is of 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours to predict lunar and solar eclipses accurately. The available physical records of the total solar eclipse on July 31st, 1063 BCE, and the famous eclipse of June 15th, 763 BCE, confirmed the observations made by the Assyrians in Nineveh. The most famous ancient Greek astronomer, Hipparchus, perhaps might have been the first person to predict solar eclipses accurately using solar theories, lunar theories, and its trigonometry. Did you know that Hipparchus is the founder of trigonometry and that he was the first person to measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon? One has to remember the great Indian mathematician and astronomer Aryabhata, who perhaps is the first one to understand the universe through watching an eclipse. At a very young age, he watched the solar eclipse and proposed his heliocentric theory. A 1,000 years before Copernicus, Aryabhata proposed that the moon was only reflecting light and suggested that solar eclipse was caused by the moon blocking the sun. It was again in India on August 18, 1868. A total solar eclipse was observed through a spectroscopy study of the sun's corona at the time of totality. This observation led to the discovery of the second most abundant element in the universe, named helium. You might have heard of Einstein's theory of relativity, but did you know that Einstein's theory of relativity can be proven with an eclipse? Well, yes. Just because a famous scientist says something doesn't mean the world will accept it. Many other scientists must confirm its validity. Einstein's theory of general relativity says that large objects cause outer space to bend. The larger the object, the further space bends. So, if this proposition was right, then the sun's massive gravity could even bend light rays towards itself. During totality, when the sun's disk is being blocked by the moon, it would be possible to check if that was true by checking the positions of the stars behind the sun. To test this, the famous British astrophysicist Eddington set up observation posts in Brazil and on the West African island of Principe during the occasion of the total solar eclipse on May 29, 1919. As predicted by Einstein, Eddington and his colleagues could see the light from the cluster of stars behind the sun and they seemed to bend towards the sun and thus Einstein was proven right. In ancient cultures, many people believed in scary stories involving mythical creatures eating or stealing the sun. In ancient Chinese culture, solar and lunar eclipses were regarded as heavenly signs that foretold the future of the emperor. The Chinese believed that a dragon ate the sun, causing the solar eclipse. 
In ancient Greek culture, they believed that a solar eclipse was bad omen of the gods being angry. In Hindu mythology, the belief is that Rahu is beheaded for stealing the divine nectar and his head flies off, swallowing the sun, causing a solar eclipse. Even in the modern era, a popular misconception is that pregnant women and unborn children can be harmed by a solar eclipse. They are asked to stay indoors during a solar eclipse. In many parts of India, people fast during a solar eclipse due to the belief that any food cooked during a solar eclipse will be impure or poisonous. Scientists and astronomers around the world have debunked these claims. There's no scientific evidence that a solar eclipse can affect human behavior, health, or the environment. These superstitions are a great threat and disrespect to all the effort and time that the scientists and science popularizers put forth in establishing the science and facts of eclipses. So, what actually are these eclipses and why should we be interested in them? There are different types and forms of eclipses. There are solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, and there can either be partial eclipses or total eclipses. Solar eclipses occur when the sun, moon, and earth are all aligned in a straight line. In this phenomenon, the moon casts a shadow on the earth, blocking the sunlight from falling on the earth. Lunar eclipses, on the other hand, occur when the earth blocks the sun rays from reaching the moon. So then, what is the difference between a partial eclipse and a total eclipse? Well, a total solar eclipse occurs when the Earth is located in the umbra of the Moon, and a partial solar eclipse occurs when the Earth is located in the penumbra of the Moon. So then, why don't we have an eclipse every new or full Moon? The Moon orbits Earth every 29 days, but we don't get eclipses every month. That's because the Moon's orbit is not in line with the Earth's orbit. It's tilted about 5 degrees with respect to the Earth's orbit, it might not seem like much, but keep in mind that the moon is 400 times less in diameter as compared to the sun, and is 400 times farther from the sun. At this distance, 5 degrees is enough to keep the moon's shadow off of the earth for most months. On August 21st, 2017, all of North America within the path of totality will be able to see one of nature's most awe-inspiring sights, a total solar eclipse. This path of totality, where the moon will completely cover the sun, will stretch from Lincoln Beach, Oregon, to Charleston, South Carolina. Those outside this path, though, will still be able to see a partial solar eclipse. If you're lucky like me, to be in Illinois, you will be able to see the longest duration of a total solar eclipse, 2 minutes and 40 seconds near Carbondale, Illinois. And if you're smart like me, then you won't miss out on this golden opportunity. Let's enjoy this beautiful sight with a barbecue. While we prepare to watch the solar eclipse, what is NASA doing? NASA will observe the sun, test new instruments, and explore our understanding of the sun and earth system. So, how can we as citizen scientists help out NASA? Simple. Enjoy the event and send our images and data pertaining temperatures to NASA. Join me and enjoy this spectacular event. I hope to see you there. Thank you and bye bye.